This is Mike Owens with the Watchdog Report at the Bristol Herald Courier and TriCities.com, and we're here at the starting point of a February 15th police chase that ended with one man dead and another injured in a whirling mass of glass, sparks, and metal a mile away in the downtown. There was a car just wrecked being chased by an officer on State Street. At 8.29 p.m., 911 receives a call from Michelle Gibson, the owner of the Country Club Bar and Grill. She is warning them about a man she believes to be drunk who has just sped out of her parking lot down the road toward downtown Bristol. Please come. This is Brandy. I can help you. Yes, this is Michelle Gibson at the Country Club Bar and Grill. Uh -huh. We just turned away a man that was drunk, and he said he'd been drinking and smoking a joint. He hit a car out in our parking lot and just drove off like a bat out of hell. And I'm worried about other people on the road. It is a red four-door older car with South Carolina plates, and he's heading towards downtown Bristol. Okay, we'll go ahead and get someone to take a look for him, okay? You said he was headed toward Bristol? He was headed towards the, uh -huh. All right, we'll let him know. You. Thank okay. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. At 8.35 p.m., 911 receives a call from a motorist complaining about a drunk man staggering through the parking lot of State Street Liquor and Wine. Police Department, Anderson. Hi, um, I just was driving down State Street and just saw something that kind of concerned me. I didn't know if maybe someone could go check it out. So, you know the new liquor store? I think it's State Street Wine and Liquor right there on State Street in Bristol. Um, there was someone getting out of a car, out of a car, and he just looked like he was really drunk, and, um, went into the liquor store, and I... Okay, what kind of car did he get out of? It was a red, um, I'm not sure what kind it was. It was a bright red one. It's parked in the parking lot right now, and it's still running. He left the car running and got out and was kind of stumbling around in the parking lot. Officer Matt Cousins pulls up just as William Marcella backs up into a telephone pole. Officer Cousin throws on his lights, gets ready to stop uh, Marcella, but he drives away over a concrete embankment, down steps, fishtails into the street, and speeds off. Let me try to stop Ohio. He's fleeing the scene. He's turned back into the phone call, Joe. And he's bound. It looks like he might have hit a car up here on the West State or Correction State Street. He's right. Right in front of the Paramount in Bristol, Tennessee, on State Street. Please send someone quick. Okay, we should. We have officers that are out there. Are you a witness to it? Uh, or a victim? No, I'm not a victim. I just heard. I heard it and saw him slide 100 yards down the street. Okay. I doubt okay. the person's even alive. All right. Well, we've got we've got a couple of officers out there now. Okay. Uh, All right. Thank you. Tell me what it was like when you were coming to the liquor store. Exactly what did you see as you approached the red car? Uh, I was approaching the liquor store from on uh, West State Street. And uh, as I arrived, the liquor store is to my right, and I observed a red Oldsmobile in the parking lot, and it backs up into a telephone pole that's in the, uh, kind of on the edge of the parking lot in the street there. And it, it backs directly into the telephone pole. So at that time, I activated my blue lights to, in an attempt to conduct a traffic stop. Okay, when he pulled away, how fast was he going? Was, did, could, you, could you have caught up with him? 
Um, well, if I recall that correctly, the last I lost sight of him as he crested the hill um, right there by Bill Gatton, and uh, he was far exceeding my speed. Uh, he was he was just he kept he left me in the dust, and uh, I was probably going about 60. By the time you reached the intersection leading to the downtown, was he still in sight? He took off so quick it was there was no catching. He, he decided to go no matter if police were around or not. Okay, now could you describe the scene for me as you were approaching the van in your car? I knew that Officer Cousins and Officer Kisser were already out with the uh, defendant vehicle. So I pulled up, I saw the van, and he was behind the, the car behind the van. And uh, a car stopped in the middle of the road, which was my official place to stop. And knowing that they were out with the defendant, I went with the van because I knew there was an injured person inside. What did you see as you first looked into the van? Um, he was laying um, in the passenger compartment complaining of his leg being broke. So was he kind of laying down or in the ch chair or what? Yeah, he was laying down. There were, uh, you could see that there were a lot of people walking around um, from one place to another trying to assess the situation of what they just witnessed. Um, was there much confusion uh, going on when you arrived? The, the among the among the yes. Among the um, I think they were more in shock than uh, confused. Um, as to what happened, um, I think we secured the scene fairly quickly. We're here with Michael Brabson, the one man who was injured in the wreck and survived. Kind of set the scene for me. What were you doing when the car came and downloading movies to uh, occupy my time while I was at the at the shelter? What happened after it slammed into you? Um. Well, I I just looked up and uh, seen the car coming at me, and I knew I didn't have no time to react, so I just had to brace myself to for the impact. So. After the impact, did you lose consciousness, or do you remember everything that happened? I can remember after the after the impact. Uh, I, I can remember getting up and unlocking, trying to unlock all the doors or any door to get out. But the two front doors were welded shut, and um, the only door I could get out of was the sliding back door. Did you scream for help, or did anyone find you? A uh, young lady that come in. Uh, uh, seen how I was and then it was probably I'd say a couple of minutes after that when uh, the cops actually arrived when they actually cops actually showed up at the where I, where I was at tell us what is your life like now is everything working okay for you or is the injury still healing well I'm not allowed to put any weight on my leg because I've got a titanium rod in my leg and I've got two screws and I've got a pin uh, going toward my socket to hold my leg on. And um, I have to go to the doctor to find out how long it's going to be before I can put any weight on it. 